What it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It. Ash Said It dot com. Ash Said It dot com. Welcome to the Ash Said It Daily Podcast Show. I appreciate you guys for all of your love and support. Over 1,000 episodes, excuse me, 1,100 plus episodes, half a million streams worldwide. None of this would be possible without you guys, so I thank you so very much. Today, we are talking to a very accomplished young lady. I mean, Huffington Post contributor, award-winning, best-selling author, publisher, filmmaker, the list goes on and on, the beautiful Saba Tekel. Hey, Saba. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm good. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Really awesome. No, thank you so much. I know, girl, I know that you got a tight schedule. You got some big things going on this weekend. So we really appreciate you having time to, you know, stop in with us and chat a little bit. <laughs> so, thank you for, again for having me. Schedule yes. is a little lighter now. Gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. All right, Saba, so let our audience know, where are you from? Where do you represent? So from could mean a lot of different things. Uh, <laughs> you know, my original, I guess my origin is Ethiopia. My family's from Ethiopia. Um, I was born in Houston, Texas. I was raised in Seattle, Washington. And oh, I've lived wow. in like great cities like L.A. and in the past Atlanta. And now I'm back in Atlanta. So, yes. yeah. So fun is a lot of places. <laughs> yeah, it's very seasoned. You know, very seasoned. The seasoned vet. <laughs> the seasoned <laughs> travel. So what was your dream career when you were a kid? And how close have you come to reaching that goal? So, sorry, say that again. I want to make sure I got that right. I said, what What was your dream career when you were a kid? And how close have you come to reach that dream? So my dream career as a kid was to be, eventually, if I, if I remember correctly, was to kind of like be the next my Angela, you know? So oh, I don't, okay. I, I'm sure I like that's like so many girls, right? But mm-hmm. um, it was to, to really write poetry and, you know, just be a writer, right? Mm-hmm. So while I can't say I am, you know, the next client or even the desire to be, but as an author or just being published um, was enough for me that I felt like I've accomplished something. That was about four or five years ago, like a co-author book. And all I felt was like this level, even though I did publish a poetry book, by the way, if I back mm-hmm. up a bit, I did. Um, you know, and I learned about that industry. It's very, uh, it's just extremely, you know, different. Yeah. <laughs> that. And, uh, you know, so I kind of prepped myself in and, you know, you know, my course had changed anyway. So when I just started to commit to just telling my story, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. just being published in that way, whether it was in a book or a blog. So, yeah, some years ago I've accomplished that and I feel, you know, you just, there's a moment where you feel like, oh, if I died now, I'd be happy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I could die and be like, okay, well, you know, I don't feel any regret because um, I've told my story, you know, yeah. so, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Now, when you were doing that first project, your very first book project, what was your inspiration behind that project? So, yeah, so, you know, I'm big on self-help and it's because I needed it, you know, mm-hmm. so do you not these, but there's so many women, uh, Marianne Williamson, Lisa Nichols, uh, even Amy Allen Van Zandt, and uh, they helped me through such tough, tough, tough times, yeah. and so they became my inspiration, because what they did is what I needed, like, I needed them to tell this, like, I needed them to be raw, I needed, one more. I didn't know I needed it at that time, mm. you know, I, I know that, I know I needed help, and I, was, I think I was so tired of sharing such a, such a cookie-cutter response, you know, like, yeah. you know, I, I know I need a motivation, but I didn't want to hear from somebody that's so motivated and so perfect. You know what I mean? I feel like I needed to hear from women just like me, and I could identify with the women with the women in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. And they allowed the message kind of like really felt it was tailored towards me, especially during those times. Mm-hmm. So they inspired me, and that's what brought me here. Cool, cool. All right, you guys. So we're gonna take a brief break. We come back we're talking more with Salva Teco. we're going to talk about this soul summit that's coming up this weekend blazing hot in the a town the atl and how you guys can get involved and if there are any tickets left so hang tight we will be right back did you know that some foods can cause weight gain body aches and extreme fatigue these are just some of the symptoms of food intolerance well what is food intolerance 
Food intolerance can occur when the body cannot properly digest certain foods. This can result in acid reflux, migraines, and so many other painful issues. How do you find out what foods are causing this irritation? It's easy. Pinner test. With half a million satisfied clients worldwide, Pinner test is the number one way of identifying foods that may be causing discomfort. This simple at-home kit is easy to use with results usually within two weeks via email. It's that simple, all right? What are you waiting for? Go visit pinnertest.com and use my special promo code, Ash Said It, for your discount today. Welcome back to the Ash Said It Daily podcast show. Today we're talking with Saba Teko, Miss CEO herself. And Saba, you've got a big event coming up this weekend, this big annual event that you guys put on every single year. Let us know a little bit about the Soul Summit. So, yeah, every year we gather celebrate and to be celebrated, to impact mm-hmm. and to be impacted. And I think it's really important as like fellow life coaches, authors, speakers, you know, mentors, that they, they get their cup pretty much filled too, you know. Yeah. And this event is just, just that. It's like a not for profit event, meaning I mean I'm I'm in business of course, but it's just kind of my way of giving back to my authors. Um and in a way of just bringing them together because although I've worked with them, they have most of them haven't met each other. So I thought that was really important that they have an opportunity and a space to meet each other, and um, that's pretty much it. We, we we share our stories. You know, this year we're going to have a panel discussion about being impactful. I think it's really important that we educate ourselves on what we're doing that's working. You know what I mean? Yeah. And share that. <laughs> yeah, and then hear how people are being impacted, you know, and that's how, you know, that's how you inspire other people. That's how you become impactful. So um, that was the intention this year, and the theme for this year was intention, right? So we want to set better intentions. There's power in that. Um, I think sometimes we overlook we overlook what what the power of of, of setting a goal and right. setting an intention, mm-hmm. right? So we talked about that, and I thought that was important for that the theme. And a lot of people chose because a lot of people to choose what their what their theme or what they wanted their intentions to be. And impact was one of the most used words that we're using as the overall theme. And, 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 and starting conversations about that and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's the purpose of the event, and um, it's been every year. It's been pretty awesome. Wow. Now, how can people get involved if they say, hey, um, well, this year might be a little bit cutting it too close, but maybe for next year, how can people get involved? <laughs> so, in many ways, um, hey, they can get on my email list uh, at 20 um, There's always several different opportunities. If it's being a part of the book, if it's supporting the book, if it's joining the movement, uh, there's so many different things that are going to be coming about, um, like a docu-series. So there'll be opportunities there. So I would just suggest definitely getting on the email list. Okay. And what about tickets for this year? Are there any tickets left? Yeah, we still have room. Um, we're, we're, as far as meeting, like, meeting the minimum goals, definitely be met. Um, mm-hmm. I would say there's about five left. Oh, yeah, wow. we're about five left. Yeah. So, yeah, so it would be great if we could fill up, fill up the room. Yeah. And how can people follow you guys on social media? So there is 20, uh, on Twitter, it's 20VW Movement, 20VW Movement. There's a Facebook, 20 Little for Women. Um, of course, they can definitely follow me um, at Saba Tekel, Twitter, twitter.com slash Saba Tekel, and same thing with Facebook, Saba Tekel, Instagram, Saba underscore Tekel. So um, one and the same, I always promote everything that's 20 Little for Women. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Saba, much more success to you this year and the coming years as I see it continue to grow for you and your authors and everybody that is involved with you. So we tip our hats to you. Keep doing good and great works. And who knows, there may be an aesthetic collaboration in the works. You never know. (laughs) So we appreciate you so very much. Thank you so much, Saba. And thank you guys for tuning into the show. I appreciate you guys so very much. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me, just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the history books. Social media is nice, but real life is way better. Until next time, you guys.